Thank you, Chair. Um, after yesterday's very eloquent, elaborate, extensive um, historical information that we were fed about uh, the origins of uh, the Sikh immigrant community in Canada, I'm going to skip all of that, spare you all the details, except to make a couple of references to some statistical set of uh, points, just to contextualize uh, where Nanaimo Sikh community stands in relation to the rest of the Canadian Sikh community. Um, <clears throat> so 2011 census, my, my figures are based on 2011 census, uh, but things obviously would have changed uh, between these few years. Um, but I feel it give us some kind of a broad indication. 2011 census posted uh, the total number of Sikhs in Canada at about uh, 454,965. So it's about half, under half a million. So somebody said to me it has gone beyond that now. Um, <clears throat> the total number of Sikhs in British Columbia as per 2011 census is 201,110. Um, of the total number of 1.567,400 visible um, um, minorities in Canada, 4.7% would be people of Punjabi origin. So that kind of gives us some comparative perspective where the Canadian Sikh community uh, sits. Against the background of these numbers, the Punjabi Sikh community in Nanaimo BC stands at about 300 families, most of whom are elderly in the age group of about 60 years on average. I've selected the Nanaimo community as the location for my ethnographic work as it is one of the oldest in BC uh, and many of them have lived in the city for over 60 years and have their children living in various parts of Canada. Most of them are still first generation Punjabis as the Sikh community began to spread out from Vancouver and other mainland areas, many came to settle on the Vancouver Island. Some settled in the city of Victoria and others in Nanaimo. The city of Nanaimo attracted the Sikh community because of the employment opportunities in the local mining and lumber mills. Vancouver Island was originally home of the First Nation people known as Snanaimo. Uh, from which comes the name Nanaimo. <clears throat> the Spanish settlers arrived on the island at about uh, the end of the 17th century, the British arriving in the late 18th century. The English first established the city of Victoria in the south of the island, uh, but, the discover but with the discovery of coal, uh, they gradually moved north. Uh, the coal mining formally began in 1852 in Nanaimo and later a sawmill was established to supply finished wood for the mining sector. Many of the Sikhs arrived in Nanaimo between 1930 and 40, with many more continued to stream in through family connections. They worked mostly in the sawmills. By 1960s, there were enough Sikhs in the city to warrant a place of worship. The first Sikh temple was established in 1972, simultaneous with the establishment of the Vancouver Island Khalsa Divan Society on June 3, 1972, um, which is also the date for the first temple on 328 3rd Street in Nanaimo. The second temple was established almost a decade later on uh, 305 Prido Street, the second temple is called Gurudwara Sahib Miri Piri Tarbar. Both the temples are within very close proximity to each other. By my informants were reluctant to offer explanation as to why the second temple was established um, in view of the proximity. But the reason seemed obvious enough to speculate, but later confirmed by the trusted of the first temple. The first temple on 3rd Street follows the tradition of sitting on the benches or chairs around tables during Lanka, whereas the second temple on Prido Street follows a more orthodox practice of sitting on the floor. 
the visible split within the group of Sikhs uh, worshipping at the first temple on Third Street happened in 1999, and thereafter the dissenting group who opted to observe Langa uh, practice of sitting down on the floor uh, moved out and began to meet in different parts of uh, the city. And then around 2000 and 2001, they had their first uh, uh, place of worship, which is where the present temple sits on Prado Street. Both temples have their loyal, regular members and contribute to the financial needs of the temple. However, Third Street Temple claims more members than the second one, which is uh, in a way consented or agreed by the priest of the second temple. Um, <clears throat> most of the, um, uh, the, as I said, most of the, I'm going to skip uh, some of the details. Most of the uh, people, as I said, uh, who attend Sunday worship, uh, Sunday is the main uh, worship service, uh, which starts at about 10 o'clock, goes on uh, approximately about 10 to 12. The the general singing of the various selected verses um, from the Granth Sahib uh, stops, and then the priest uh, kind of reads uh, certain portions of the Granth Sahib. And then um, at about 12 o'clock to 12.20, um, the priest or some, um, uh, the elder of the, uh, the temple will read news from around the world relating to the Sikh community and so on. So in a sense, that is how they uh, connect themselves to the transnational uh, Sikh community. <coughs> uh, there is a general low turnout of the youth uh, at the Sunday services. Um, they um, come and go during uh, any time of the service. Um, and this could be uh, attributed to either the general tendency of young people to be lax about religious matters and so on, or uh, it could also be attributed to the, uh, the, the, the fact that they are more concerned about their careers uh, and they have moved out to the larger cities and they no longer live uh, with their uh, parents. And uh, so that probably is the other possibility. <coughs> The temple and religious work becomes quite central to the existence of these older folk. Many of them have worked mostly at the Samyam for most of their life and have retired. Weariness is obvious on their faces, but none of them would want to leave Nanaimo as it is a smaller city and everything they need is within accessible distance. And more importantly, they have grown to become used to the place and their older friends but they play a crucial role in the ongoing immigration process of new Sikh communities coming into Canada. Um, so in this sense, uh, the temple really connects um, between the community, the new immigrants, and uh, the, the religious identity of the community. Um, the central uh, part of the worship on Sundays is reading the, as I said, the, uh, the, uh, the selected verses from the Grand Sahib. Um, but there is an important theme that runs almost every Sunday. Um, the, much of the text is, uh, that is selected uh, is about the temporariness of the world and the impure state of the physical body, both of which are seen as impediments in their journey to spiritual well-being. It is an apt choice of a theme, for it speaks to the experience um, and struggles that the community had to undergo throughout its existence. Many of them, though highly qualified and well-educated, some having served in the Indian Army with distinction, had to content themselves with a meager income from hard labor at the Sami. Both the translation as well as the text in original language seems to have, uh, well, what they do is on either side of the, uh, the altar side, uh, they have large screens where the beam, uh, the text line as the singing goes on. Uh, this enables the, uh, the people to actually read the text as they, um, as they sing. Um, both in the case of uh, colonial context as well as in the new immigration context, 
the role of the temple or a religious center to give expression to their difficulties and troubles seem quite ubiquitous. In this sense, they see Gurudwaras in uh, Nanaimo are no exception. Every Sunday ritual ends with a prayer for all those six uh, Sikh diaspora around the world, and one of the elders invariably reads the news of happenings and matters of concern for Sikh community around the world. Attention invariably turns to their main temple in Amritsar and calls for the unity of all global Sikh community. Despite their internal differences, the temple in Amritsar remains their focal point for unity and inspiration at times of despair. Through the uh, mediation of the text of the Granth Sahib, uh, with special attention to these verses uh, that uh, deal with human suffering, the community seems to draw inspiration each time they shout Wahe Guru in unison. There seems no doubt that the Guru, the Granth Sahib, the Khalsa, and the Amritsar temple continue to guide the community in times of difficulties, both at the individual level and the community level. There is therefore no hesitation for the community to invest enormously, both in the physical structure of the temple as well as in the various activities um, of the temple. The Gurudwaras, the dress code, the Sikh community seem the most dominant facet of their identity. The Nanaimo Sikh community maintains a strong presence by their meetings in the temple as a religious group, but also by their physical appearance. Their strong roots in India and their continued connection to the Sikh temple in Amritsar give them a sense of identity as a group in a land where they are a small minority. On one level, they seem to portray their common religious identity as most important and their internal social divisions as less important. When I ask them about the role of caste in their community where most youth do not seem to be interested in such matters, the older folk tend to be uh, either evasive or downplay the question of caste and affirm their religious identity as most important in contrast to their internal social uh, identities. This seems in contrast to the Sikh community in the UK, for instance. Uh, in the UK, studies have shown um, uh, the existence of social divisions um, within, for example, in the South Hall region. Uh, and hierarchies among the Sikh diaspora. Um, it is also in contrast to how Sikh community in India perpetuate um, uh, caste-bounded identities, particularly in relation to the Dalit Sikhs versus Jaut Sikhs. Uh, the reason for this reluctance to talk about their internal social boundaries in public is that they are all uh, a small community and no particular group seems to be in a majority position, albeit that I did not come across any Dalit Sikhs in the two temples. This perhaps points to the fact that most uh, Sikh families that live in Nanaimo have arrived through family connections and friends of the same socio-economic background. It is here that the crucial role of women can be seen in not only maintaining religious identity as well as a discrete caste identity. With the exception of the few younger women in their 20s and teens, majority old women tend to wear traditional dress not only to the temple, but one finds them with the same traditional attire in malls, supermarkets, and so on. The older women speak mostly in their native language, as most of them cannot speak English. And even if some middle-aged women could speak English, they tend to slip into their mother tongue in a natural way. They ate traditional meals and enjoyed their time at communal cooking at the temple. Uh, Teresa George attributes the reason for such traditional outlook of Sikh diasporic women to the fact that most of the older women were new immigrants to Canada, about 72% of them arrived in the last 10 years, and that they mostly lived in the village setting during their formative years in India. Additionally, she suggests that they are insulated from the surrounding culture because they tend to live in their ethnically concentrated locations. In Nanaimo, although a few have scattered in the city, most of them live in the south side of the city uh, with the, within the proximity of the location of the two temples. Because of their traditional outlook, women tend to be the most important links between the newcomers and the life in the diaspora. Not only are they influential in ensuring their close kith and kin from India uh, are able to immigrate, but also when they arrive, they seem to provide the preliminary cultural buffer to the newcomers. Many of the women tend to host students who come to study at the local university, 
and most of the foreign students who belong to the Sikh background, either from Punjab or from other cities in India, are indeed connected or related to the families who live in Nanaimo or the greater Vancouver region. It is through, through these women folk that the link between the temple, the community, and immigration becomes obvious. The three factors, women, temple, and the larger community, form a pattern within the ongoing immigration of Sikh families in Canada. It is also these three factors that seem to link uh, them, both as an ethnic enclave, in much the same way as the uh, broader South Asian group. I'm going to uh, skip uh, that thought and go to some of the later thought. Um, I just want to read one quotation from Paramjit Judge who talks about this um, the identity issue. He says, I quote, while the first generation of Sikhs still have to, still like to have chapati and dal bhaji cooked in the traditional Punjabi style, uh, and their women may like to wear Punjabi dress generally identified with the jumper and salwar, the children born and brought up in Canada love donuts, burgers, and jeans, unquote. <laughs> Nevertheless, Notwithstanding the enthusiasm of the younger generation to identify themselves as Canadians first, they seem to face challenges outlined by Paramjit Judge. Um, he points out the following three factors. First, while the new European immigrant is easily assimilated because of the similarity in appearance, the Sikhs look different. Second, notwithstanding the fact that the Sikh presence in Canada is more than a century old, and even though their contribution to society in becoming premiers in British Columbia and by being part of the growing Canadian economics and politics, their cultural needs are not adequately catered for. Three, although immigrants are a necessity in Western countries, they are depicted as seeking better prospects and not as essential to the economic needs of Canada, despite the fact that there is a negative population growth where there is an increase of senior citizens and a constant decline of economically active citizens. It is in the light of these factors, uh, the significance of the role of the temple and Sikh men and women in particular needs to be articulated. In the case of Nanaimo Sikh community, majority women particularly appear different as they mainly mingle within their own uh, community and not easily assimilated in view of their linguistic challenges and food habits and their styles. On the other hand, men are able to mingle with majority society as most of them have working colleagues and are exposed to uh, the mainstream society. It is also precisely due to their uh, relative sheltered lives that they are able to practice at least to a limited extent their traditional caste practices even in a Western setting. Notwithstanding their uh, strong identity as Sikhs, they do project themselves as Indians in a broader sense. Admittedly, this Indian identity is not as strong as the Sikh identity. In Canada, various cultural practices of minority communities are encouraged. Its language policy remains firmly set with, it, uh, with its uh, recognition of English and French as official languages. Dusenberry makes a compelling case as to how Sikh minority community in Singapore have successfully lobbied and negotiated for Punjabi language and culture to be incorporated into the national multicultural framework. She argues that in Canada, on the other hand, the Sikhs have been stymied by categorizing them as one of the Indo-Canadian groups instead of as a distinct race. She therefore argues, I quote, in Canada... I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the first name kind of... Um, the, it's uh, understandable, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes my otherness very obvious. Uh, in Canada, although... Uh, I'm quoting now. In Canada, although individual Sikh temples and local organizations have partaken of multiculturalism funds set aside for folk arts, ethnic history, and heritage language programs, state bodies have largely resisted claims by Sikh organizations to represent a distinct ethno-cultural group with its own agenda. They have based their refusal on the grounds that Sikhs are but a subset of the larger community of Indo-Canadians." Nevertheless, the case of Canadian Sikhs, as noticed from the Nanaimo Sikh community, is that they depict themselves as a religious community within the larger South Asian 
society living in Canada. Therefore, their ability to claim a racially distinct category for themselves, as claimed in the case of Sikhs in Singapore, is limited due to their primary profile as a religious community. Within the larger multicultural groupings in Canada, they are distinguished as a minority group, but not so much as an exclusive group as the Chinese, for instance, or um, Africans, and so on. Uh, in conclusion, let me say that visible homogeneity is misleading as underneath that outward appearance is the internally differentiated community along caste lines, ideological and doctrinal lines, and appearance as well as along political affiliations. It is perhaps this internal differentiation that stands in their way of becoming a distinct social and political group to reckon with. The fact that in Canada they could not be accorded a distinct ethnic status, let alone a distinct race group status, could easily be attributed to the fact that they are divided from within and at the same time they could not be distinguished from the broader South Asian ethnic category. Religiously they are different from the rest of South Asian community, but ethnically they are of the same category as the rest of South Asian uh, community, at least as far as the immigration uh, department sees it. So let me stop there. We can always come back to the other points. Thank you. Okay, thank you.